Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be looking at creating a basic web server using the ESP32 hardware. I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to select from the ESP MISC the low end 32 light and click new project. For the web server, we're going to need a few uh, component libraries. So under comms, I'm going to start with the wireless LAN ESP32. So that gives us uh, Wi-Fi communications on the ESP hardware. I'm next going to have a network communications component. And this provides our abstraction to talk to various hardware from the libraries. And then I want to add the web server generic. And then these components connect together in turn. So you can see that they have corresponding icons. So the web server connects to the network comms. You can see that's connected. And the network comms connects to the wireless LAN. You can see that one's connected. Okay. So now what we need to do is call these in turn. So first we need to um, call this one, then this one, and then this one. So while it's LAN32, we need to initialize it. We need to connect it to our network. So we need to connect to SSID. So I'm giving it my network details. I'm giving it a timeout of 20 seconds to connect, which should be plenty of time. I then need to call the network comms, so I'm going to initialize that. And then I need to talk to the web server, so I'm going to initialize that. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a server socket on the standard HTTP port 80. And I'm going to create a loop, and inside the loop, I'm going to check the socket activity. This returns a string which is uh, it contains the um, page URL uh, of, of, of the re requested uh, web page. So I'm just going to create a string variable so we can return that, which is called web page URL. And with that, we should be able to simulate this program. So under network comms, if I under simulation, if I select uh, a network interface, you can see that there's there's various here. These are basically all the interfaces that my computer has, and I believe network four is actually the the interface I'm using at the moment uh, that gives me a valid IP address. So you can see. Uh, my computer's got an IP of 192.168.1.107. So if I run the simulation and I create a web browser page, then if I type in 192.168.1.107, then here we have the the web server running from the simulation, and you can see that. There's two pages by default, and they're working quite happily. Okay, so let's compile to the hardware. So to compile to the hardware, under build, project options, I'm just gonna check the programmer port is correct for my board, click modify, and I'm then gonna compile to the target. It's asking me to save the project, so I'm just gonna save it as a good one. And then the compilation starts. Again, when you're compiling a new project for ESP32, it's going to take a while. Uh, I've compiled this project before, so it's compiling fairly fast. It's just because there's, there's, there's a lot of libraries for ESP32 to be included. OK, so the programming is complete. So if I open a web browser, I know that the IP address of my ESP32 board is 192.168.1.127. I'm 
Um, to find this out, you could connect an LCD to the ESP hardware and print the IP address on the LCD. Or you could do what I did and look at the um, router for the connected Wi-Fi devices um, and just get the IP address from there. So there we go, a web page served by the ESP32. And again, it's reasonably responsive and I can switch between the two pages. So let's have a look at the web server component itself. You can see that at the moment um, the HTML source is set to embedded. We have two uh, pages that it can serve. These are the names of the pages and then we have the actual HTML code that's generated there. This is quite nice, this creates a nice little uh, self-contained uh, website for you. Um, you can do things like using the get in and get uh, get in and set out values to pass uh, variables in and out of the web pages. Uh, we've, we've got a few tutorials on our wiki on how to do this. Um, but if you wanted a bit more of a, a dynamic website um, that use sort of standard .html files, um, then what you can do is under component libraries you can drag on a, a storage um, file and this allows you to either from the simulation point it to a directory or from the ESP32 hardware you can connect a SD card or a micro SD card and put all your web page files on that SD card. This would also allow you to do things like host uh, images and um, videos and, and, and other things like that. So to, to switch this over, I would, um, in the web server component, I would change the HTML source to file SD card. Uh, it then asks for a FAT component. You see it's, it's got a new icon here to say it needs a, a FAT component. So I point that to my file SD1. And then we've got a HTML source directory. Um, I believe that's just for the simulation um, and in the actual hardware it just uses the the root directory. Sourcester is the um, Flockard project directory so it'll look inside the project directory so if you wanted to say put it in a folder off there called HTML then you could just do slash HTML like that. So I hope this has been useful. Um, I've been Ben Rowland and this has been Flickr version 9. Thanks for watching.